What kind of podcast is this? Bad Play Style is a book club podcast. For video games. For video games. What am I supposed to say again? Welcome to Season 3 of Bad Play Style. This is our infinite spoiler warning. Skip ahead if you don't want to hear that Metroid is a girl. Or that Zelda's a boy. Yeah, how's that? Yeah. We swears a lot. Mm-hmm. So if you don't like that... You say bad words. You can send corrections to... BadPlaceL at gmail.com. I am Matt. I'm Keenan. I'm Owen. Hi. Uh, this is this is Bad Play Style. We're a book club style podcast, but you already know that because you've listened to more than one episode. Because um, you like us. Because you love us. <laughs> hey, Matt, what did we play this week? Well, Matt, it's funny that you asked. We played RimWorld. That's a fun game. I know. But before we get into talking about that, we should talk about the stupid things that Owen did. Oh, what, what did I do? Shame! <laughs> the, the, oh no, I've, I've been shamed. So I I'm think covering my face. Your shame is Audra, uh, Audra Pillar colored. <laughs> yeah, it um, sure is. Do you want to do, you, do, you wanna do green dog turds? <laughs> <laughs> lumpy green t- dog turds from Barath. Yeah. Um, so do you want to explain uh, what the fuck I'm talking about? Yeah. You want to give us a okay. quick primer? Right. Of what so went I think down? this is my first shame. I, mm, I believe it is your second, but I, I'm not willing to commit a, to that. That's a deep gut feeling. I as, believe, although I as will most say, shamed, I am not willing to commit to that. <laughs> as, as shame boy, um, no, uh, I I have a deep memory that mm. I can't fully articulate here that tells me that at some point you've called out yourself. Okay. Before. Well, I, I yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. I feel like there's something you owned in the shadow of much shame in my direction. <laughs> so okay. So, the shame is a long story. Okay. <laughs> Three years ago, I received my backer copy of Pillars of Eternity mm-hmm. um, and put 100 hours into that game mm-hmm. and got almost to the end of that game and dropped it for like more complicated reasons I don't need to go into. The video games, they're like the tide. Yeah. yeah. Um, Especially The Witcher 3. <laughs> I put off playing it for three years now. Um, you know, I had a feverish month when I first got it. Yeah. I haven't touched it in three years. The, se- the sequel is announced on Fig. <laughs> I back it on Fig. I also buy like a big. I buy like a no, big. Oh, and I feel like I feel the need to. <laughs> you back something on Fig. Yeah. <laughs> so this is weird. Like... I, feel, I feel like this story needs to be told in the fashion of the <laughs> dolphin fucking shaman from Venture Brothers. I see. I see the game on Fig. Yeah. I, I fuck it. <laughs> And I, I buy, like, a big physical copy of it that even comes with, like, a textbook what? world guide. Okay. Um, yeah, but those world guides. Yeah, that, that's a fun book. Um, well, also, like, I have a box coming in the mail with a DVD, even though they already gave me a fucking code. So, like, because <laughs> I, I guess I want to pretend it's the 90s. Um, Hell yeah. Yeah. A lot of people do. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, go ahead. Um, and so yeah, I back. I get oh. a code. So it comes out. I, I back it on Fig and it comes out. Mm-hmm. And I the day that I install it, um, on my hard drive, the sequel to the game I have not finished, and it has, it has like an import feature where if you have an end game save, you can import it into the new game, and yeah. it keeps all your stuff. So like I have like which a, I heard is not working properly yet, but anyway. Yeah, continue. well maybe it's you're good. in luck. Yeah, maybe this is maybe this is all all Aethos minor like shame net gain. Um, anyway, um, I install the game, and then as like a way to motivate myself to finish the original game, I spent thirty dollars on DLC for the first game. <laughs> And have started playing it again. Um, That's White March 1 and 2, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, like, in a very roundabout... Which are fantastic, by the way. Anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, in a very roundabout way, I've spent, like, more than $100 on, on Pillars, Pillars of Eternity stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, but, um, but my my thing here is I feel the need to point out, and I get, this is all feelings-based, but I have, <laughs> I, have a, um, I have a deep sludge... In my soul that tells me that you soul will sludge. finish these games. We're going oh deep. yeah, yeah. We're going deep. Like, like I'm, I'm back on the pillars train. Okay, and I have a deep sludge in my soul that says that that's not true about other people sitting in this circle right now. <laughs> that could be. That could be. <laughs> but you when won't. I, no, 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 no. No, like the, the whatever the sixty dollar games you buy, you don't frequently. No, absolutely. Okay. Um, Own that. When, <laughs> when I booted the game up, it 
uh, I bumped, first of all, I just bumped the difficulty all the way down to tell me a story mode. <laughs> it's like, I just want to knock this shit out and start the sequel. Sure, you just, just want to experience it. I just want to yeah. feel the content. And, and, you know? then, and then, like, when I booted it up, the game's like, oh, hey, um, plot hook for DLC. It's like, do you want to travel to the DLC? And mm -hmm. I was like, sure. And when I did that, it pops up this prompt that says, like, we've noticed that you're very high leveled. <laughs> you're very over leveled for the DLC. Would you like us to bump up the difficulty on the DLC? It's like, oh, hell no. Nah, bro. So, like, I, I'm like, like this extra step of overpowered of just like running around caves kicking over ogres and <laughs> like yeah there's a lot of ogres in white march one um i met some npcs that i absolutely don't need in my party <laughs> and i've taken them into my party and made a very suboptimal party configuration <laughs> um just to experience DLC content? Yeah, yeah just because I want to nice. meet these people. Yeah. I got, like, a cool robot, and she doesn't have a real name. I love Devil of Carrick. Yeah, she's, she's cool. She's cool. And I got that dumb guy who hangs on a fish barrel. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, Zawa? Yeah. Zawa is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was super down with his thing, like, as soon um, as I met his, him. His voice actor makes me feel good inside when I listen to his voice. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's and, then he, and then he's constantly talking about self-inflicted pain and drugs, and I'm like, ooh, I like yeah. you. <laughs> well, and, like, when you meet him, he, like, is talking about how... The reason you found him in a barrel of fish is because he wanted to destroy his own vanity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, like, as you're talking to him and you're like, dude, why are you covered in fish? And he's like, well, it's to destroy my own vanity, blah, blah, blah. And two women, like, walk by and, like, give him, like, uh, look. And he's like, ah, yes. <laughs> it's working. It's working. <laughs> yeah, I just love, I love his whole thing of, like, he just totally wants to destroy himself. Yeah. Like, when, when uh, they first were like, the monk class is all about taking damage and then doing abilities with that damage. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's dumb. And then Zawa made it cool. Sure. Right? Like, talking to him, I was he like, no, I, I, like, I get it. He provided get, reasoning get, and flavor to get, this thing you I didn't like. I get the thing that you're doing. Mm. Thank you. He's putting himself on the path to self-annihilation. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, same thing happened with uh, the Cypher lady, Grieving Mother. Like, oh. uh, I, I, I know you her. haven't dealt with her, but, um, like, I, I was like, Cyphers are dumb and complicated, and I don't get it. And then I had Grieving Mother, and I was like, Cyphers are awesome! They're supposed to be, like, psionics? <laughs> they're, they're, of, they're, like, right? emotional psionics, right? Okay. And they have a lot of, they have a lot of powers that nobody else has access to. Okay. Right? Like, a lot of their stuff is completely different than the way, like, wizards and spreece work. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I am not at all engaging with the mechanics of the game mm -hmm. at this point. Like, I'm definitely, like, running into a room and just auto-attacking shit to death. <laughs> and then, like, sometimes if shit gets heated, like, I don't know, use your stuff. Mm -hmm. Use a thing. Yeah. Use your abilities, kids. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was that. So, all right. That was a little pillars aside. Okay. Um, uh, Keenan, you haven't talked much. What are you playing? What am I playing? Uh, I'm still messing around with HOTS. Um, you, you got back into that. What, like... You can maybe mention, like, what's the state of that game? Uh, so they added a couple characters, and they're kind of doing the, like, tooling it back down to where it was. Without, sure. but, so like, they're doing the whole, like, mobile Yeah, so they added Deckard Kane, and okay. he's kind of cool. Oh, what does he do? He drops potions. He's like a support, right? He's a support. He yeah. drops potions. That's cool. And he has uh, this cool, like, big AOE stun where he draws a big triangle on the map, and then anyone in it when it's done is stunned. What's that called? I don't know. Because one of his abilities is called Stay a While. Yeah, his, one of his ultimates is a 180 degree arc that everyone in that arc gets put to sleep while oh, he tells them dope. the story. That's good. It's really good. That's good. Um, yeah, uh, and his other ult is like a big fire tornado with books coming out of it that hurts you does, and knocks does, you around. Does he have one about the Herodric cube? There's, yeah. yeah he, he has, has a slow that a cube yeah. appears above your head. Like, it's all but, but very does, thematic. But does he say, you have quite a treasure? Uh, I'm Herodric sure cube. he does. So, I have so like, in Diablo 2, the way you empty your Herodric cube, like, if you just want the things in there to not be in there, is you throw it on the ground, and then the inventory of the cube is dumped out onto the ground, <laughs> and then when you pick up the cube again, I believe they fixed this at one point, but for a long time... He'd just say the one well, line. No, every time you pick up the cube, the game treats it like you picked it up for the first time, so yeah. you, the next time you encounter Kane, he'll be like, oh, you have quite a treasure <laughs> in that Herodric cube. And then, and then he tells you crafting recipes for the Roderick Nice. Cube, but they're all shitty ones. Like, you can turn two quivers of bolts into a quiver of arrows with it and mm. shit like that. Helpful. I mean, like, cool, but no. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's in the game now, and they've done some tweaks to characters, and there's some reworks coming. So there's two new characters. Uh, Phoenix came out. Oh, okay. We talked about him already. Yeah, we time. talked about how he's a disappointment, that he's not a disappointing zealot that turns into a murder drinker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, everybody's always like, Phoenix is a, is a... He's a dragoon, and I'm like, well, but he was a he was a shitty. Yeah, like the zealot whole first person. half of the game, he was like a kind of okay zealot. Like, 
Yeah. What if he has an ability where his psionic blades flicker out because he forgot to put new batteries in them? <laughs> or whatever the fuck is supposed to have happened in that cinematic. Yeah. Like, like you, you remember that in StarCraft 1? Yeah, like, and there's like no explanation and then he gets jumped by Zerglings. Yeah, it's like, is that just a thing that happens to Zealots? Is no. Is blades like, like break? It it happens to everyone, Phoenix, we swear. Uh, no, it. I don't... Mm. I never saw that happen to my cell. That's... Exactly. That's my point. Well, it was is a, it, was isn't a supposed to be powered by their brain. Or yeah, something? it was an ED joke, man. <laughs> so yeah, and then I've been playing more uh, more PUBG with my friends when I have time. Yeah, I've been playing on the the test server with the jungle map. Yeah, pretty yeah. neat. Yeah, Sonok is a hell of a map. It's savage. It got, it, it, it's not called Savage. Savage. It's not called Savage. I'm doing a joke. You Natco. It got it, it got a name. <laughs> Um, and all the things in it got names too. Yeah. Um, it's uh, just weird. It's really small, so the games are quick, which is neat. Yeah. I, I like, I was playing it last night and like, I think like with how small the map is and with how dense the cover is, mm-hmm. like one thing that kept happening to me last night when I was playing, uh, with a friend of the show, Sean, um, the glue. <laughs> yeah. Not the glue. Don't feed into that. <laughs> he, he gets high on us calling him that. Um, he gets high on glue. Yeah, Sean gets high on glue. Um, is that like we kept just like fucking walking into like like squad sandwiches? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like there's so much cover that like that tree has three people behind it and you don't know it. Well, and, and then no, there's like a squad all around you. Yeah, and you don't fucking know it. And so like I was talking like it may be that when we play this map, we need to fundamentally change the way we move in the map. Yeah, like we need to move way less aggressively mm-hmm. and like or, or 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 like get moving sooner so that we can afford to be moving slowly and carefully. Right. Um, because just like time and time again, like we just like walked into people waiting for us yeah. and like, and like, we didn't know they were there. Like we, we walked into a place, checked it out. was like, okay, let's loot and like get situated. And like, then as they, soon as you're comfortable, they pop out and kill yeah, you. Yeah. They, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But that map may take some like reconciling yeah. the way we play all the other maps versus that map. Yeah. Cause we play like shitheads. Yeah. Um, we play like the Tremor brothers. We do. <laughs> That's yeah, um, and then I played a lot of RimWorld. Yeah, RimWorld is probably like eighty percent of the games I played in the last two weeks. Cool, cool beans. Uh, I played, I replayed Tacoma with developer commentary on, but I'm not gonna say anything about that because that's do that later. for later. Yeah, we're gonna put up a bonus episode. Yeah, Yay. we're doing we're doing a bonus for Pienas. Bonus. Um, and then I demoed Stellaris for a friend of mine. Uh, that was cool. Uh, she good game. she was like, I don't have time to play games, but show me Stellaris. And I was like, you don't want me to do that. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> you won't have time for everything else. <laughs> yeah, and Stellaris is a and I, I, like, game. I started showing her the like the alien race creation, and she was like, ooh. And we started showing her the game, and yeah. You know. That game simplifies so many good things about those games in a good way, for the most part. Well, I think the biggest thing is that it's the, you know, when it's the historicity, right? Like, it's, so with, with any other Paradox game, you're plopped into an already existent, like, political situation. Mm-hmm. Whereas yeah. with Stellaris, it's a traditional 4X game. Everyone starts with one planet, right? Yeah, and you don't know anyone. Yeah. And you don't know anyone. So it's... it's you don't have to figure out what the connections so are because you just make them as you, you go. You're using Paradox-esque systems... In a game where you start from zero. But yeah, in a game where yeah. everyone starts on a yeah, level, level playing field. Whereas... Unless in, you have that checkbox check. In normal in normal uh, play... like, And that's why that's why the ancient empires exist. Yeah. It's for the, the the reason of, like, if you're playing a guy in the HRE and you're not Austria, it's like, that's what that play yeah. is, right? So, um... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't play anything of note... Except Rim World, so Owen, what's up? Uh, I've been playing Pillars of Eternity, apparently. Yeah. Um, played Star Trek Timelines more. Yeah. I got some dumbass characters in yeah, there. Yeah, that last <laughs> couple events. I got real Quark's dumb. mom in an event. Yep. And she's holding up a bar of Latinum, and her name is Profitable Ishka. I don't know, that game's stupid. And Moogie's in the game now, too. No, no that... Moogie is a is mommy in oh, Ferengi. Oh, okay. So like, okay. they call her Moogie. She's Ishka. Okay, that's her name. Got it. Um, oh, you just reminded me about my my Ferengi movie idea. <laughs> I want you tell. To, yeah, I, no. Now we need to know. Okay, so it's um, so it's a. Uh, oh right, right. We talked a, about it's this. A, it's a Deep Space Nine prequel. 
Um, and it's about Quark's father, Keldar, who is like an awful businessman. Sure. That's like, why Quark is in the position he's in. Yeah, and why Rom is an even awfuler businessman. Yeah. Um, and so it, it's it, um, Gilbert Godfrey plays uh, Quark's dad. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, who else was in it? French Stewart better be in it. Yeah, we could, yeah, we could put French Stewart in it. That's that would be my choice for Ferengi. Yeah, um, but like, and Danny DeVito's in it. Good. Um, <laughs> Danny DeVito's like maybe uh, Keldar's like crappy business partner who has like maybe even worse ideas than him. <laughs> so it's Gilbert Godfrey and Danny DeVito. Um, but like, here's the thing: is like the movie is just automatically Frank in the, my head. I think, that the, I think that the DeVito character should have um, good instincts and good opportunism. But have zero interest in stewardship. Sure. <laughs> right? So, like, he starts these things and he keeps starting these things and they're good ideas and they draw people in. Oh, Keldar, we're going to start a shuttle dealership. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and, like, and, like, and then he's like, here, Keldar, you run it. And yeah, Keldar runs all of them in the ground. He's onto the next thing, the next yeah. venture that he's spending all their capital um, on. And so, but, but, like, here's the thing, though, is like the whole movie's theme is, is the failure of capitalism. Okay. Because that's like a big thing in Deep Space. That's like the story arc of the Ferengi yeah. in Deep Space Nine. Is like, like their whole system's built around this, but also that's not good. From an outsider looking in. And also like their whole society transforms at the end of that show. Sure. Like spoilers on a 30-year-old show. <laughs> um, and so like... Damn the, it. it! Also the movie is not about Keldar. Like it is on its face. Like it's called like Keldar. Let, okay. uh, slip strips, bars, and bricks, a Ferengi story. <laughs> so let's... Wow. Wow. Hold on. I just need to bathe in that. Damn. 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 Yeah. But um, I just need to quickly, just for, just in case people haven't watched other episodes or read other episode titles, the ethics of the Bad Bad Playstyle podcast, which is that DS9 is good. Yeah. And Voyager's that Voyager is bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's anyway, literally continue. the name of the episode. Yeah. Um, so here's the thing, though. It's like, on its face, it's about <laughs> Keldar. Like, his name's in the title. Sure. And, like, he is, like, theoretically the main character we're following. But, like, here's the thing. is that The movie's actually about Ishka, his wife, mm. who's actually a very good businesswoman mm -hmm. um but by ferengi societal customs is barred from conducting right. business and has been doing so in secret for it sounds like a while um that's like one of the big things in deep space nine and then she's also, like shadow brokering yeah yeah and then also like her sons are growing up looking up to keldar and not to her Who's a shithead <laughs> and, and and so like and so it's her trying to like like raise her sons to not be shitheads like Keldar, mm -hmm. but like she can't, um, or or at least <laughs> society or at least, won't allow. Or at it. least there's enormous obstacles to her doing so, such as her love of Keldar. Yeah, exactly. And, and like his standing in society. Yeah, yeah. Which is their standing. And so and so yeah, like she does she does the best she can. You know, like she raises Rom to at least be a decent person, mm -hmm. even if he's like a fucking worse businessman than Keldar is. This is like reverse Goodfellas. Yeah, kind um, of. Yeah. yeah. It's like Dragon Ball, but from from Chi Chi's point of view. Um, and it's great because even though all the actors have like aged like fucking twenty five years, mm -hmm. they're all Ferengi, so you're just burying them in rubber yeah. anyway. So like, well, like, any any wrinkles would just add to the experience. Well, right? well, so like, um, the Negus could be in it. You could put Wallace Shawn in. Yeah. And you could make him look younger because you're just making new Negus makeup for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so okay, cool. Should um. Who's the dude from Ghostbusters? Dan Aykroyd? No. The Little Shop of Horrors guy as well. Oh, Rick Moranis? Yeah. He, he doesn't act anymore. I know, but like he was he was talking about getting back into it. Yeah, I mean, his kids are all yeah. adults now. So then you put Rick Moranis in there? Yeah. I feel like he'd be a good Yeah, Frankie. he'd be a good Frankie. Yeah. Um, he'd probably be down for it, too. It's fun to sit and think about which actors would be good for Frankie. <laughs> I want Goldblum as a Frankie. The thing is, he's really tall. Yeah. Also, like, he wouldn't vocalize it, right? Yeah. I, <laughs> he just wouldn't. I, I think Jeff Goldblum should be in the movie, but not be a Ferengi. Okay. Like, I think Jeff Goldblum should be, like, a fucking, like, Vulcan merchant that an comes a, and talks to him. Yeah, oh, yeah. You play such a great movie. You, uh, you. <laughs> That's all you mean. And, and, and like, no, you have it aside where the other Vulcans are like, why do you stutter when you speak? We, we don't do that. And, and like, all Vulcan, Vulcans are trained to enunciate correctly. And it's like, it is a business tactic. It makes them trust me. Yeah. <laughs> underestimate me. I'm a, I'm a novelty to them. <laughs> That's great. Uh, yeah. I'm happy we had that. All right, I need to go talk to Rick Berman. <laughs> Yeah, hold on, pause the podcast. Is Owen going to hand us the podcast this time so we can go talk to Rick Burns? Yo, Rick! <laughs> hey, yo, Rick! All right, um, 
So this is the reiterative spoiler tag. Yo. There's no story in RimWorld, but... Yo, but we're about to spoil the shit out of our stories. It's, a, it's on the Doom agenda, so I have to say it. <laughs> yeah, no, but we, we already spoiled DS9. So Union rules say... <laughs> it's good we're warning that we spoiled DS9. You get DS9 a 15-minute break, and you got to tell the audience about the spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so RimWorld. What the fuck is this game? Uh, it's Dwarf Fortress in Space. Bay. Like frontier western kind of Firefly without any authoritative structure space. Yeah, yeah, because it has like like. Did you guys read the fiction primer that comes with the game? No, no, I should. That sounds uh, rad. So it does like a Burning Empires style story mm. where like. There's been these empires spanning across the galaxy, and a bunch of them have collapsed, and a bunch of them are great. There's good planets here, and there's bad planets there, and there's, like, no unifying structure to them. Mm -hmm. um, and like, Which is how it's really going to go That's down. why you run into, like, super soldiers and cryo sleep in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah. And so, like, you're on Those one... Assholes. And so, like, there's the glitter worlds. Hey, I'd make them join my fort. Anyway, yeah. There's, like, the glitter worlds that are, like, sh nice cyberpunk Coruscant, you know, city planets yeah. filled with neon lights Laser and swords pop and, and, and drugs yeah. and hover cars. And then there's like the fucking doldrums on the rim where you are. Um, Cause it's rim world. Yeah. And so like the world you are in is like dotted with like wreckage and things like that from oh, man. Whatever, whatever civilization was there before. Does rim world exist in a similar universe to heat signature? Uh, I don't know. Heat signature's universe seems like it has its shit together. Yeah. You, it, heat signature seems like it hasn't experienced an apocalypse level event of that magnitude. Yeah. Um, and that it has better communication tech. RimWorld's big problem seems like it has like sort of subpar yeah. FPL and subpar communication yeah. tech to allow for that sort of like feudal diaspora. Yeah. Going on. Yeah. Yeah, because um, like I just made an orbital beacon and it's like. That doesn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> you talk to ships every now and then. Dude, that thing's awesome. I, I'm not denying that, but it's like... The bulk goods trader this comes? doesn't change our lives in any way. I don't know. I think it changed my lives. Yeah. Yeah, when I built my orbital beacon, we started making real medicine. I haven't gotten room. any ships to show and up yet. And people so. actually want to buy medicine. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, like, the bulk goods trader I mentioned... That's the good way to buy neutromamine or whatever to yeah, make yeah, the for medicine. medicine. Yeah, yeah, because they just bring assholes. Also, and for the dirt bulk sheet. goods trader, I can be like, dude, hey, you want some beer? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, how much beer you have? I was like, I have a thousand beer. He's, he's like, yo, beer. I can move that. Yeah, quick. And he's well, like, yeah, I can move that beer. Well, also, you can go to the bulk goods trader and be like, yo, do you want literally anything? <laughs> <laughs> so, do you want four hundred pairs of torn up pants? My llama's <laughs> been making wool, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> or, or like, I sell, uh, I sell the bulk, bulk goods trader all my. Um, the little amounts of leather I have that are too small to yep. make anything. And I was like, yep. yeah, I have 12 squirrel leather. Fucking great. <laughs> Which is literally from, like, 12 squirrels. So yeah. it's not even worth, like, holding on to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, we're getting, like, on a weird aside. Whatever. Before... This is what we do. So, like, the game, the game, the game <laughs> like, very much draws its inspiration from Dwarf Fortress. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing I want to talk about is, Owen, you have mentioned to me more than once since we've had this period that there is a deep sludge burning inside you yeah. of, of many things you want to say about this game. So this is this is your opportunity to just like let loose yeah. and we'll, we'll riff off of you. Yeah, so so, so like, like you have things to say. So it's like a management game you get yeah. you get people you can sort of indirectly control. I think people who are familiar with the podcast are familiar enough with okay. what Dwarf Fortress sure. is, right? So, so it's like it's like a game that is like trying to be like more approachable Dwarf Fortress, which I I, I gotta say I really fucking appreciated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. No, it, it's 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 more UI heavy it, and less. It's the best attempt I've seen at that because there are there is like a small cottage industry of games that are like, yo, what if someone made Dwarf Fortress more palatable to a wide audience? Literally more palatable. Yeah. Um, the, Get it? Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> There's a number of these games, and not all of them are very good. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking at you, Nemoria. Um, Ooh, damn. Yeah. It's a call out. It's an entire tree. Damn. Um, anyway, this one is the one that does it good. Yeah. But not, gr like... Not great. It's hard yeah. to get to the granularity that Dwarf Fortress has at times. Yeah. Like, uh, the, like there's, like, this enormous legacy that Dwarf Fortress is, like, built on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can we can we talk about neutromine? Yeah. Right now, is this the time to do sure, that? Sure, sure. Okay. Like, like, I, I like, let, let me do a thing to sure, build sure, sure. to that. But like, like one of my bones to pick is like Dwarf Fortress. Like one of its great, like foundational strengths is its proc gen world. Everything it, is diegetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has this like enormous clockwork world that it generates for you every time, and Rim World 
like gestures at that and sort of does that. And then, like, also kind of cheats yeah. at it. And I don't mean, like, it cheats like it's training to beat me, but, like, it's, like, it, it, it is positing that it is behaving this way. And from what I can tell, um, a lot of the way events happen to you just happen to you based on your storyteller and, like, RNG. And how far you are it's, into the game. It's as, yeah. though, it's as though Dwarf Fortress has 100 sliders and RimWorld has 10. Yeah, sure. Right? Like... Dwarf Fortress has all this stuff to randomize around to make everything feel different each time, even when you've gone to similar places. Whereas RimWorld is like, if you go to Temper Forest, there's going to be wolves, there's going to be llamas, and there's going to be... I don't think it's to the point where we can point at RimWorld and say, you are a hollow vac- facsimile. No, ex- exactly. Right, yeah. it's enough. Yeah. yeah. It, like, it's just not as specific. It, it, it does a lot of good stuff. But, but, but you were saying it like itches at the back of your brain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like it also makes me like... Um, it's like the first time you get killed by a cheater in PUBG, mm. and every time you get like snap headshotted by someone, it's like, is that a cheater? Mm-hmm. You know, like I have to see the death cam. You watch the death cam, you're still not sure. Mm-hmm. You know, and like, and you feel that way every time someone just snaps you off. So it's like anytime, just like some dumb shit happens. It's the, fucking, it's the asterisk. You know? yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like whenever, whenever. Um... Galen and Brian play each other at uh, board games, and one of them wins. They always joke about the asterisk, like, yeah, because someone didn't follow the rules. Yeah, yeah, like in like a perfect way. Yeah, yeah, in a tournament way. Yeah, and and like to them, it's a joke, but it's a good like metaphor for what we're talking. Yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, and so and so like I, I when when shitty things happen to me, I always feel like I can't trust that it happened because of the clockwork world that I'm existing in, or mm-hmm. if it's just the storyteller. The storyteller is like basically a difficulty slider you can fiddle around with. Yeah, kinda. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like you, you can say like, "Hey, I just want a base build," or "Hey, I want raids to hit me," right? And that kind of shit. Um, but it's, it's like, kind of the way the difficulties like, in Civ worked, where where one just outweighs every. Like, "Hey, you want a lot of pirates in this game," right? Like that yeah. type of thing. Like, well, it's like in in Dwarf Fortress, if you get a lot of like goblin invasions, it's like, well, I was a bonehead for not checking if there was large goblin civilizations mm-hmm. around, and, it, and didn't build my defenses. Out of yeah, but in this, it's like the raid. It's like it's the raid is based on. Not if there are is a raider civilization because there always is. Yeah. Um. And it and then the size of it is based on how long you've been playing and what difficulty you're playing at. Well, and and um, I believe how much wealth is in your base. Mm-hmm. They they can like psychically sense how much your base is worth. Mm. Um. Because like I was getting like nonstop raids for a while when I had like a big backup of money. That like I was just. Every time I would interact with a trader, I would just have a come up of like two thousand silver, mm. and like that went on for a while. Mm. And like the raiders would not leave me the fuck alone until I like spent my money. Mm. Um, that and, is that's, and and that's like my own anecdote. I don't know if that's like a causal relationship. Sh- sure, sure, but the very suggestion is it unsettles. And, and it's the thing I was talking about, where like I I feel like I can't trust my I can't trust my experience there, because like I I the asterisks. Yeah. yeah. Um, like that said, like we're 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 dogging on this game, but like I actually love this game. It's, well, it's so, great. And I mean, that's just the Doom agenda says the bad first yeah. before the good. And then I guess the only other bad thing I want to like really harp on with it is um, the fucking hotkeys in that game suck. Like you have to click through menus almost you, all the yeah. time. It's the opposite of Dwarf Fortress because in Dwarf Fortress you just learn hotkeys and stop remembering well, and what, what they was mean. The, what you were telling me like it's almost there. Right. Yeah, yeah, it and has them. Uh, yeah, like you have to click open the different menus, and then those menus have hotkeys. Yeah, if it was one or the other, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Where like Dwarf Fortress has Byzantine menus, but once you learn them, you just like belt out key combos to do a thing. Yeah, I remember like for those of you who didn't listen to the uh, the Dwarf Fortress episode, it was um, it was. Uh, I asked, I went, hey, how do you do this thing? Goes, I don't remember, that's muscle memory at this point. Yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> like, I, yeah, like, I have to think about it when you ask me, like, how I build a bed or uh, build a bridge. And I was like, okay, it's B, G, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You um, have to actually read that instead so of just I, I do it. I want to talk about, um, so, you like, neutromine. I want to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. And that's, like, another, like, contrivance in the game mm-hmm. is that, like, you can't, like you can make herbal medicine in the game, which is like crappy medicine, mm-hmm. and you can make good medicine out of that medicine, but only if you get this item, and it you can't make this item. You can only buy it from other civilizations. You can't even like high tier research how to make no, it. No, um, and it's like it's just it's a contrivance to force you to like trade with other people or raid other people. Sure, but like where the fuck do those people get this shit? You know, yeah, like, and, and it, like it goes back to I always I always try to ask this question. There's a really great YouTuber that everyone should check out, Mr. B Tongue. He has an episode about Fallout Three versus Fallout New Vegas where he asks the question, "Where do they eat?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's like 
Rivet City doesn't make any fucking sense the instant you ask that question. Whereas Vegas, they have a fucking farm. Yeah. There's like nothing to do at. It's a location that doesn't really give you anything. Yeah. Except right. it gives except them for, food. Except for an in fiction reason where these people are yeah, getting it their it food. Make, from. It makes a setting yeah. real. Well, and where do they eat is an important question whenever you're building a setting. Yeah, exactly. That, right. But that's Mr. B Tug's point. Yeah. Right? Is that is that the developers not asking themselves or the game or the game world this type of question is a disservice to to the end user right right yeah um so anyway and, th and that's how i feel about neutro i mean is is the big question for me is where the fuck are you getting this yeah right because because if neutro I mean was literally the last thing on the the tech tree yeah it wouldn't bother me and then there's the other thing of like you know other other villages those aren't like mapped out they don't have like a way that they exist they don't have an internal economy i i think they do have their own internal map because if you attack villages oh, okay. you if actually... you zoom in on the map you can see oh, okay like, there's so I, didn't, I didn't know that maybe i didn't get map. close enough well but, it... well, but, but like when you send a caravan somewhere you, it'll give you the option visit this town or attack this town and if you attack this town i believe you actually go into it and control your dudes yeah. and whatever but okay. like yeah no i get what you're saying though. yeah but I, yeah. it's not it's not obvious from the outside how those things work because there's nothing surfaced for you to understand it right it just you like, can't look at it and say they have eight farms they must make farm stuff I'm, like, re I'm really liking this metaphor i'm feeling the asterisks on that one yeah. that's all i'm saying yeah um which you know i shouldn't be feeling fuck you Hey, um, well, cool things about this game. Yeah, yeah it's good? a great game. What's so, good? Like I, now that we've dogged on the game a ton, it's actually a fantastic <laughs> game. Yeah, like those are our gripes. But like, I played twenty one hours of this. I looked it up, and I played twenty one fucking hours of this in a time where I'm literally running ten hour days at the coding boot camp I'm at. So yeah. that tells you how much I like this game. Like it's yeah. one of the only games I've played. Um, which I'm I'm gonna plug again the practice of getting on Discord and playing single player yes. games yeah. next to your friends. Yes, um, that was great de-stressing yeah. for me in the last few weeks yeah that was um, a good time we were all talking about hey i got this pyro running around setting fires and yeah we all have that like one guy <laughs> always yeah, like oh hey God. he's no big deal just have someone follow him around yeah um, well and, and like we were all sharing the like i got this one fucking guy who does this one thing <laughs> right like the whole time um so so the game like randomly generates people for you and you can I love the systems of how it puts people together yeah right yeah like how how some people are like oh, i'll pick shit up yeah. I don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. farm. <laughs> I don't farm. You then you don't eat. <laughs> um, fucking Italian job most deaf. Yep. I yeah. had a bad experience. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then like the And then and then their fucking backgrounds. Like I had a lady who was like my chief miner. Yeah. And you know her background was? What? Medieval torturer. Hell yeah. <laughs> so she's blank torturer. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking rad. I, I have a guy whose name is Clumpster. <laughs> whoa, whoa, but what's his full name? Well, it was I'm, really I'm getting good. to it. Okay. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. His full name was like Von Bismarck or yeah. something like that. Yeah, Clumpster Von Bismarck. So, so uh, all your all your, your your pawns, which I believe they're, you're supposed to call them. That is what they're called, yeah. Um, we'll say pawn -shaped. it'll have their like last name or whatever, or like their name, and then a comma, and then like whatever their like... Adult back, profession was. Yeah, their, 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 their backstory profession. Um, so Clumpster is... Clumpster, comma, weirdo. <laughs> um, Clumpster was a like an artistic weirdo as, as a, a child, child, and then like a wandering weirdo as an adult or something like that. He's also a night owl, so he he never meets anybody, <laughs> which is like beautiful because I don't know if you guys have ever worked night crew anywhere. Yeah, but everyone who works night crew has the trait weirdo. Um, like it's just a thing. <laughs> so I got in in one of my games, I got my first night owl. Yeah, and the night owl was. First of all, from space, uh -huh. and came with no clothes, uh -huh. but then was a nudist. Uh -huh. Nice. And so that guy looking, knows what he likes. Good luck in the winter, buddy. We, we have a dude who comes out at night and cleans the entire base in the nude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With, this is good. With a fucking chain shotgun. And everyone just kind of puts up with it, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everyone's like, oh, he's, he's awake. It's nine o'clock, I should go to, to bed. Go to bed. The naked guy's out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, like, if you see Swing and Dong, it's time to go to bed at Matt's Fort. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Swing and Dong with chain sauce strapped to its back well this is the night elf no no he has shotgun a, yeah he has, a, he has a he has a fucking uh uh semi-automatic shotgun yeah he has a semi-automatic kalashnikov shotgun yeah. like i had uh uh so my weirdo it worked out really well for me being a night owl because um 
he was also like one of my best crafters. Mm. So him and the other oh, crafter worked yeah. opposite shifts. Oh, so, so they wake up and they aren't waiting. Yeah, and so the crafting bench was just always in use. And so like we we're always making like mini guns, or we're always making uh, components and shit like or that. Clothes like, or yeah. whatever you need. That's yeah. good. Uh, well, clothes is tailoring. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, but we just built a bunch of tailoring benches because. So this game, its systems are just obvious enough from a programming standpoint, which is where my brain has lived lately, mm -hmm. to be, like, interesting on that level, too, while I play it. Sure. Because the way you, like, prioritize jobs and things mm -hmm. is, like, literally the character just has a list of things he does, and, like, thinking about the way that's structurally built behind the scenes helps me manipulate it more. Well, that's, like, a, it's a large part of the meat of playing this game is manipulating that particular, yeah. like, I, I pulled up a YouTube tutorial the other day, and they were not using the number priority workload. And I was like, what sure. the fuck are you... Don't play this game this way! <laughs> like, I don't know, I played... I, about half the time I played this game, I, I hadn't turned okay. on the number priority. And it was, like, kind of annoying they didn't have it on. And, like, once I found it, my life got a little better. But it wasn't, like, a huge deal. Well, and ideally, like, you have people that specialize anyways, so it's not that yeah. big a deal. Yeah. Um, I ended up playing quite a few games because I decided the permadeath button was a cool idea. Yeah. So the, the per, I was gonna say the um, on the list of like the workload thing, it's I really like that the game made me feel like there was a definite feeling of relief and stress relief when I got my fourth person. Yes. And and yes, like three people is hard enough to juggle all the things you slightly need. Slightly less of a feeling when I got my fifth person, and it's like a diminishing return after that, right? Yeah. But it's like there's this definite like audible almost like yeah. Release there's a tension that of that's like there. Oh, cool. So, yeah, yeah. So like like actually, that's the thing I want to talk about is the the scope of this game. Like Dwarf Fortress has a um, a cap of two hundred dwarfs in your fort. And, like, that's, like, a cap written in the game. And you can actually change it. But, mm -hmm. like, that's the cap. And, like, you, if you, if your fortress runs long enough, you will just have 200 dwarves. That right. will just happen. It just happens. You will just get migrations on the reg, and you will get 200. Like, I played this game for 60 hours um, and running the same game for pretty much the whole time. And, like, I got up to 21 people. Yeah. And, like... So it makes you care about the individuals much more. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so, like, in... The the another forgive what's the guy's name again? Uh, uh, Tynan. 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 Forgive me for making so many comparisons to Dwarf Fortress, but you brought I mean, it on yourself. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm... um, so like in Dwarf Fortress, they all have like backgrounds, like in Rimworld, and you can go look at them, and they do affect that dwarf's behavior and mood and things like that, and like their skills, right? But you got so many fucking dwarves, you never have a chance to look at them. Yeah. Um, Plus, it's matters. like three menus deep. Whereas when you look at a character in this well, game, and also you it's like an unreadable just wall of text too. Yeah. Like it, like it. Tody's made some effort to make that thing more readable, but it is rough trying to read a dwarf's like thoughts and yeah. and feelings, and 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 also like the the backgrounds of your um your your pawns affect them in such a profound way. Whereas like in Dwarf Fortress, like this guy just likes copper mugs, and if he uses mm -hmm. copper mugs, it makes him happy. But this dude over here refuses to do social or yeah. caring. Yeah. Or this guy's a misogynist, so all the women in the base hate him mm -hmm. uh, because he says rude shit to them. Ooh, can all we the talk time. about Peter? Oh yeah, so like so the so the game generates like way better store like individual personal stories well, like, about like, your colonists. like Crusader Kings style yeah right where you have an individual relationship with a character in the game and their personal struggles and, and stories and, and, and the traits. way they interact is based on their traits right. yeah right so so Peter is uh, one of the oldest colonists in my my colony is he one of OG three or no no only one person's alive from the original three okay. Um, and th that means even the dog died. Um, oh, damn. Um, but he's one of the very early recruits we got. And so Peter, when we got him, was like 73 years old. He is gay. <laughs> he um, is incapable of violence. Um, also, he's the only gay man in the base. He, like, after over all the years, we've gotten no gay men. Um, and <laughs> he, he is like, the only one. He has the abrasive trait. Um, <laughs> so he's very grouchy. Um, and um, and he's the doctor, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's like a phenomenal doctor. <laughs> what a fucking character. Like, that's straight up, that's movie grade character. Yeah, yeah. Like, right. you know, like, he's like he's like Doc Cottle from Battlestar Galactica if Doc Cottle was gay. Yeah. Um, which, like, I don't know. Maybe which, like, is. would be absolutely inconsequential to the way that character functions on that show. Yeah, so he's <laughs> like, so, like, Peter has, like, no fucking friends. Um, he he, like, well, he likes to drink, right? Yeah, he, uh, he was an alcoholic um, and, like, fucking ruined his own life. Liver, and then I like banned him from touching alcohol. Um, and because you can do that, yeah, there's he, a menu for that. He's pretty good about it though, he doesn't go in binges when he gets upset anymore. Um, he 
got malaria at one point. <laughs> um, and this dude, you, you, you mentioned that he was your doctor, right? Yeah, yeah. He's like a super good doctor. He's like, the, the skills are on a scale of 0 to 20, and he's like a 15 in Damn. doctor, which is like yeah. really good. That's like glitter world grade. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so the next best doctor had to like grow up real fast because <laughs> Peter was bedridden and Peter was in his 70s which like affects how well you recover from things how long it things. takes to recover um, so everyone in my for- in my base fortress I'm going to keep calling them fortresses um, everyone in my fortress let's is call a spit like let's call it what it is yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone's required to only use herbal medicine just because that's the one we can easily make and mm-hmm. we have good medicine in the back Peter's the only person that by default he's allowed the best medicine because he's the good doctor. You can't let the good doctor die. Yeah. So you were, you were explaining to us earlier that, that when Peter had malaria, you literally took a dude off of all other laborers and you yeah. said, Peter is your job now. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, the other doctor, Scott, I disabled all of Scott's other jobs and he just tended to Peter for like, like, like a third of a year because Peter took forever to recover from malaria. Okay, also, well, mind you, this implies that Owen has a lot of people because if you only have four people, you can't afford to just yeah. put someone on one of your people well, so, like and that. So here's the thing is that this story, this story is one of the few in RimWorld that has a third act. <laughs> <laughs> also that. So so Peter... That's not getting killed by muffaloes so, so or when, raiders like, like when, when Peter recovered from malaria, he was so upset uh, having to spend so much time in his own fucking hospital that he had a mood break and just like went into a daze and started wandering around um and i couldn't figure out what to do and he was starting to get hypothermia um from wandering around so we threw him in jail um because that's the only way you can like force them to stop right. doing that jail is break. warm <laughs> and then peter spent half a year in jail he just didn't want to rejoin the colony um and just was in jail and people would come wait talk you mean to you're gonna day. feed me in here and people talk to me yeah cool. <laughs> um and so he was not able to be our good doctor um thankfully scott learned a lot tending to peter and everyone else <laughs> especially during, during peter's malaria about and being in prison finally after like a year from mal- peter getting sick with malaria to recovering to getting like a this year like a pro since, wrestling storyline. A year <laughs> since his malaria infection, he finally decides to rejoin society um, and gets a fucking flu and does the same thing again. Goes into a daze, gets thrown in prison, and dies of his flu because he's fucking 80 now. <laughs> um, and like no amount of medicine and treatment from Scott will save him. Um, so What he, was his name in parentheses next to his age? Oh, um, I don't know. I've been wondering if that affects things because sometimes you'll get someone who's like, they're 40. But their actual age from when they were born is like 460 because they were frozen oh, a oh, lot. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Um, he's 166. Okay. Um, and I'm wondering if that like actually affects his, anything. His subjective age is 80. His objective yeah, age yeah, is yeah, 166. Yeah. Um, uh. And I had a couple other like weird ass stories. Like this guy Trophim in my base. Um, he had like a freak out and he walked the long walk out of the base out to the cemetery and dug up someone's bones. <laughs> um, and, oh, you should talk about the statue too. Well, yeah, so... <laughs> One of these happened before the other. Okay, them, okay. So I'm getting to that. He brought this dead person skeleton who died like years ago <laughs> up to the entrance of our base and then recovered from his mood break and just dropped the skeleton <laughs> on the front steps, uh, which I was pretty peeved about. So I told Trophim to pick that skeleton, put it, fucking put it back where you got it, asshole. <laughs> um, and like Trophim's wife divorced him. Um, <laughs> Tro- Trophim's wife was the one of the original colonists. Mm-hmm. Um, Trophim's dog, he adopted the... Trophim was also a very early recruit. He adopted the dog that we got at the beginning of the game. His dog is also dead. Uh, we, we, had, we had a rough patch. Um, so one day, Trophim goes into a mood break over like something not important. Um, <laughs> and he goes over to our cemetery. And over at our cemetery, there's, um, there's an enormous statue that one of my guys built. And the statue, the statues in this game are developed, are, are generated much like in Dwarf Fortress, where it, like it just sort of tells you it's of like arbitrary imagery and like events that happen to you. But it's usually about like somebody in your fort. Yeah, or, yeah, it's like an event. event in the history of yeah. your base. And this, the event that was picked by this sculptor is the not when Trophim's dog died, but the time Trophim went to go visit his dog's grave. And there is the image of a ghostly dog hovering behind him. So Trophim goes into a mood break, goes up to the cemetery, looks at this statue. By the way, it's a 
of poor quality. So it's like a fucking ugly ass statue of him mourning his dog, and he just smashes the shit out of this statue of himself that's at the cemetery, and then like like chills out and like Owen told me this story, and I said if there's anyone who's allowed to do it, yeah, yeah, it's him. yeah. Like, you just give it to him, like yeah, bud, and yep. like all right, like I wasn't like really mad because it was that's like the a, way he processed. It was it. a poor quality statue, like all right, man. Yeah, I got plenty of those. Yeah. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, so, so this game generates like good ass stories. So speaking of good ass stories, and I mentioned now I've been playing on permadeath because I'm yeah. a sucker for those modes. Yeah, like I haven't been safe scumming anything at all. That's in this not a game. good way to learn. It's a tough. Game like this, I've gone through a few forts. Yeah. The current fort I'm on, though, I'm pretty proud of because we got four people wow. and then we lost two. So and we're back up to ten. The <laughs> night, the night that I first jumped on and started like taking this game seriously, the very first thing that fucking happened was I'm not really paying super close attention in the Discord call, but Keenan asked Owen something about muffalos. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, like a few minutes later, he's like, "Whoa, muffalo killed my guy." <laughs> And then a few minutes later, oh, Muffalo killed all my guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I've had some really rad instances where, like, a whole herd of pack animals gets mad and kills everybody. Yeah. yeah. So when you have four people and they all have handguns, yeah, and they don't the, have good guns. Guess but... what happens? The deer fucking win. Yeah, yeah that shit goes bad. <laughs> fucking, fucking emu war. Well, and, like, you, you'll get that thing where it says, like, Muffalo Revenge or something like yep. that. And sometimes that's just the one Muffalo, sometimes, sometimes it's, it's the whole, it's the whole pack. Um, and yeah, that's bad if they all yeah. come at you. My, my current base has seen some shit. Uh, we cracked open uh, a pre-existing building in a mountainside, mm -hmm. and there were four coffins in there that we still haven't fucked with. There are four, like, space sarcophagi. Oh, cool. Uh, that I presume has, like, total badasses in them. But also in there was one of those fucked up robot centipedes who oh, had the super pew pew gun. A centipede in there? Yeah. Jesus. So we like ran back to base and we built some sandbags and we're like, fucking shoot the shit out of that thing! And like, literally five of my seven people go down fighting this thing. Yeah, the, the so one of them drags everyone back to base, and the other one takes his shotgun and starts can opening this thing so it dies. Wow. It, shotguns, huh? Well, like, we incapacitated it. Sure. And, like, we had sure. a shotgun, and then I'm like, you grab that and kill that. like, I, I just fought a centipede in mine for the first time, and I had, like, seven dudes with LMGs and miniguns unloading on that thing. Yeah, no, we have bolt-action rifles. Dude, the LMG SMGs. in that game is a DP-28. Yep. I love it. It's great. Uh, yeah, and then, and then recently I figured out that I like turrets when they aren't near each other. Sure. Uh, so what I've done is I've built a steel wall because I had way too much steel and no components, so sure. it's not like I'm gonna make anything with the like steel. Like a component bench. I haven't researched that yet. Yeah, that's, so, that's crucial. So, uh, <laughs> I, I made a wall around my entire base that is just steel because sure. fuck it, why not? I've been thinking about doing that with plasteel because I dug up a ton of it. Yeah. And then it's like... I don't actually... There's not a lot of things that require plasteel. Right. You can just make them out of plasteel by choice right. if you want them to be better. It's like, what if we just make the city out of plasteel? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I put up this wall, but there's a mud patch in part of the area I've claimed. Oh, yeah, you told me about your little murder... Yeah, so there's there. this terrible mud patch, and I'm like, well, okay, I can make this work. So I move all the gun turrets that were covering the corners of my base before to three squares away from the edges of the wall so they can't really shoot outside of the wall and they can't get shot from outside of the wall. And then I just wired them up and put sandbags in front of them. Nice. So anyone who walks into the Swamp of Sorrows in front of our base immediately gets slowed down and then the turrets all fire up and shreds Some them. Some tower defense shit. Yeah, so by the time you get through the turrets and or maybe break one and finally start fighting my people, they're all at the sandbag with rifles shooting you to pieces. Nice. So my guys literally fight like a third of who attacks us and then goes and fixes one turret and we're good. Which is pretty neat. Yeah. I... I have not progressed as nearly as much as you guys have up the tech tree. I've played for quite some time, but I Yo. think my base is just a lot more chill. Crack out some research, bro. It's yeah. so good. Well, yeah. like, we're doing research, but the research guy... I, so, my, my latest base, I accidentally embarked with one total points in social. <laughs> oh, oh, hell yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's tough. <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but the big thing that was a problem was that um, two of my people were um, prohibit hauling. Oh, mm. wow. Yeah, yeah. that's a, that's a, that's yeah. a tough answer. <laughs> this is some expert mode. We got, we got five people pretty early because we had someone fall from space and then another person show up with a raider. Oh, okay, cool. Um, and we couldn't convert the raider, but we sold him. Sure. Um, <laughs> And then 
everybody gets along for the most part, except for the person who fell from space doesn't like the person who was getting chased by the raider, because the person who was getting chased by a raider is an android with creepy breathing. Oh, nice. Oh, oh yeah, I love your android. <laughs> android with creepy breathing, he is assigned to live outside the base so, eight so, hours a day so, um, so hunting do you think, animals. Do you think that means that he um, has gross mouth breathing, or do you think he just sounds like Darth Vader? <laughs> I think I think that he... I, I'm, 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 so How does the, this manifest the, in the your mind? The character's pawn is... Um, not massively broad-shouldered, but somewhat broad-shouldered, and he has... He's um, like the Triangle Man. He has the... he has the Bioware hair. Um, yeah. You know what I'm talking yep. about? The little yep. floop in, yeah. the, in the front. He has the Bioware hair, and he has blonde hair, so I'm imagining um, Fassbender from Prometheus. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm imagining. But then I'm imagining Fassbender from Prometheus, <laughs> whose nose does not work. <laughs> um, and who has maybe like an artificial breathing situation going on. Um, and and this dude... This dude used to be a spy. So. He's like an AI spy. Oh, oh yeah, I had some. I had. Um, I found one of those cryopods, and when I opened it, we found an unconscious AI spy. Yeah. And I was like, "What the fuck does that mean?" The, the only person in the fort that um, that he gets along with is the super soldier that we pulled out of the cryo. <laughs> nice. Game recognized game. Is that... Both of them have like oh my God, over. My super soldier is such a pain. They in the ass. they have double fire and over fourteens in shooting. I don't remember what they're exact. Damn. So they're both, both of, way into both shooting. of them have our best guns and live outside the. Fort mining and shooting. Nice. That, those are their jobs. And uh, then when someone shows up, they get to be in the fort for a minute. Um, no, they actually just go deal with it. Um, <laughs> nice. So my storyteller is Chillax. So thus far, when stuff comes, it's like one angry dude with syphilis and a pipe, right? <laughs> and he's like, "I'm gonna kill you," and I'm like, "You're addicted to smoke leaf." Like, <laughs> I have a fucking like LMG. <laughs> <laughs> and and Fastbender is. Um, and the other guy, the super mm -hmm. soldier, they're both programmed to shoot anything on site that's aggro. Sure. So, like, as soon as they see stuff, they're just like... Yeah. They both have LMGs. One of them... One of them I accidentally gave a incendiary launcher to. Oh, he, boy. He shot an angry raccoon at Point Blank <laughs> once. <laughs> and that was, like, no good for him. His, his girlfriend uh, had to come get him, who also no one likes. Um, yeah, that must be why that's happening. My, my colonists are, like, super, like torn up because like <laughs> playing 60 hours on the same base you get attacked a lot of times sure. mm -hmm. and it's like all your best shooters get like downed many many times yep. over the history so, of your base so like my Sam, doctor and best shooter has one eye yeah so like, yeah, like Sam my best sniper she can't hear worth shit out of both her ears <laughs> one of her eyes is gone her other eye has like scars on it <laughs> and she doesn't have a nose I love it her her, her her vision category is very poor, and her hearing category is poor. Yeah. And the way Owen has made her combat effective is by giving her a minigun. Yeah, gun. give her a minigun, because she's, she's still got, like, fucking 15 and shooting. <laughs> <laughs> Even though she can't see for shit. So I have, um, the, everybody in my fort wears, um, uh, the cheapest hat, the, like, Gilligan hat. Okay. Um, except for one dude who has a bowler, and he's my cook. Okay. Um, and he gets a special hat because he literally has not stopped cooking since the fort was, like, nice. <laughs> enacted. Oh, um, man. Uh, and he just literally cooks and fills our fridge with food, and that's all he does, literally, I, eight hours a day, every day. It's, it's one of my favorite things to do, to do in Dwarf Fortress, and it's one of my favorite things to do in this, is, like, pick one job that you like having done all the time, and pick a guy whose only job is to do that, like... Well, so, it was kind of, it was kind of, he was one of the guys, like, there was two guys, there's two fat, ugly dudes, and one lesbian were my original drop, <laughs> sure. right? and, like, the fat, both fat, ugly dudes were like, I don't like talking to people, and the lesbian, the lesbian was like, I am capable of speech, <laughs> <laughs> right? So, like, she was the de facto lead. Oh, can, I, can I tell you about our... our... Well, let me finish okay, okay. describing this trio this of, of fucking crew. idiots. Yeah, man. Right, and then the first person to run out of the woods on us was an extremely fat, extremely ugly, non-sociable woman <laughs> who, who immediately started hitting on both of the fat, so, ugly guys so, who don't like speaking to people. So there, so, so, so we, she immediately had this enormous mood hit because she's constantly being rejected reviewed, by yeah. the two fucking ugliest dudes in the world. <laughs> can, can I just say, like, when we are saying that she's ugly, we are not passing judgment. No, on it literally says ugly. Yeah, she she literally did. has a heinously ugly. Ugly yeah, they, they have that trait. So I have a staggeringly ugly person mm -hmm. in my fort. They're also the best speaker in my fort. <laughs> um, and they're, they're really overcoming the negatives there, bro. Yeah, well, no, it gets worse. Um, they also have the trait misogynist. Oh. Um, so they're really good 
at pissing off women that they meet. <laughs> and we have like a second best speaker in the fort who's like deaf as hell. <laughs> um, so she takes penalties when she talks to people. So it's like, okay, oh, a, a, a caravan has, has entered my, my area. Let's see. We're, let's find the merchant in the caravan. Are they male or female? It's like, oh, don't send Postman. He's going to say some fucked up shit to that woman. <laughs> so, send, send Lynn. She can't hear for shit. But like, <laughs> and, she won't call her a bitch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Postman's gotten in so many fights. Like, he, when he gets mad, he just punches women and gets the shit beaten out of him. So, so the first notable interaction that my AI spy had with his future wife was to beat her up shortly after breakfast. Um, <laughs> like, she arrived at the fort. I had just finished making her clothes, which is like a multi-day endeavor. Um, God, I hate that so much. <laughs> and, I, I can't keep up with the tattered yeah, clothes. Yeah. I can't keep up with the tattered but, clothes. And, and so, like, people are going into breakfast in the mess hall, which is also the research laboratory. Sure. Um, and they're leaving, and just as these two characters leave i didn't exactly see what happened but i look over and ai spy is just punching oh, the isn't shit it, out isn't, of isn't that always how it is where it's just like you just notice that like <laughs> either someone is fighting someone or someone just got the shit beaten out of them and they're literally they're just fighting like it's the I, kind of thing too that, i like, caught it early because everyone's standing around and so i arrest her and then it like pretty much as soon as she got out of prison they got married uh, it was really so that's because the game does this weird thing where um where when people fight there's a thing that happens to them if the fight finishes. It did not finish. Okay, well, if they don't have weapons on them, mm. I let them fight. Mm. Because what ends up happening is they fight it out of their system, yeah, and they get, yeah. like, a catharsis buff, mm. and suddenly they're friends. Okay. It's like dumb middle school shit. We're like, I put that guy in a headlock, we're friends now, right? Okay. Like, it's that shit. Yes, that's actually how I have a friend, but... <laughs> like, yeah. so... Yeah, they, it's, they, it's like, they, yeah, it is like a... And so, like, if they don't have knives and aren't fucking stabbing each other open, it's fine with me. Like, because yeah. they so, won't use their guns against each other. Oh, I wanted to mention the 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 lesbian who hates people <laughs> in my original drop. She was the only one who was allowed to haul things uh -huh. as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and she has the one social. Her nickname, which was the name that she goes by in the game, I don't know how to pronounce this, which is weird because I'm usually pretty good with this kind of thing, but. Her name is S L U A T E. Sloy? I don't know. I just called her slut the entire time. <laughs> oh boy! Like mentally, like internally. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's a I rough couldn't, name. Man. I couldn't pronounce it, but um, yeah. So, so yes, listener, this game does generate stories. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking about it for a while. We should. Oof. Um. So, what kind of awards this game get? Oh, some. But d we talked about the themes, didn't we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's about um, losing is fun. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's survival um, and crazy shit. Is there any writing that we want to talk about as far as like like background stuff like glitter worlds? Or I stuff? apparently missed. I that. love the names on the bulk traders as they freight by. Yeah. Yeah. They're all really good. Um, I don't know. I didn't read all of the fiction primer. I like dipped okay. into it a little bit. The meme generation well, in general is pretty. Anyway, good in this game. Uh, also it has the thing where um you can buy you can pay money to put your name in the game. Oh yeah. It, it has like one of those. Uh, it's like literally a DLC on Steam. Yeah, yeah. Like it, you buy this thing for twenty dollars, well, you get to add your name yeah. to the pool. Anyway, I unless anyone has anyone else to say about this game, no? I Tynan, Room World's cool if you're into this shit. Play Ty, it. Tynan, you have made an incredible game. I'd yeah. say it's top tier. Yeah, it's top tier. But we have notes. Um, well, yeah. I mean, like there there are notes, and I understand. Like I understand. Room World Two is going to be a the, banger. The 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 one point oh. Like uh, it's, yeah. it's it's not. The next it's, version's one point <laughs> it's not mystifying to me why some of the yeah, decisions yeah, yeah. we had gripes with were made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there, there are... Especially when it's one are, person making it, right? There are like, reasons I can understand why he made the decisions he made. Well, and also, like, the thing we're comparing it to, Dwarf Fortress is, like, this weird edifice. Like, Toadie has been working on... For, for like, Dwarf 15 Fortress, years. Uh, 10 years. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, he's been working on it for, like, 10 years, and it's all he does as a full-time job. Right. And his brother. We shouldn't just say Turn Adams. It's, it's Turn and Zach Adams. Right. So, first of all, it's two people. Yeah. Secondly, they're in a strange mood. Yeah. <laughs> like... Yeah, for sure. Um. So, I was having a conversation with Keenan the other day about wrestling, because Keenan really likes wrestling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was saying that the promotion that you're semi-affiliated with, 321 Battle, mm -hmm. should sell um, fake VHS tapes 
that are steel plated or yes, look steel plated. We just came up with that detail yeah, today. That are, that are diamond plated steel because their their thing is when you say you say solid steel. Solid steel about everything. Um, yeah. And Keen, did you have any wrestling things to say? Wrestling things. Um, there was a very scary wild man at a wrestling show I went to this weekend. Oh, uh, yeah? And he murdered the crap out of the most annoying guy in the ring. It was very good. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant like a fan got drunk and started like hitting their spouse or it's something. It's like basically one step removed from that right. in a wrestling context. Yeah. It was ba- like... Basically wrestling Tarzan happened. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I encountered a person. We, have we talked about Blarp on this podcast, the the VR game? No. But... Um, so Blarp is that game's cool. Blarp is cool, right? It's it's like what I is feel, Blarp? I feel Blarp is worth like a couple bucks, right? It's like a it's Isn't like it a, free. It is is it free? I whatever, so. whatever. It's amazing. Hey guys, what's um, Blarp? But so it, when you're in the you got the headset on, mm-hmm. right? You're in a room. Um, there are like moons outside of the area you can walk to okay um there are uh they're like floating at different points in space and um well actually there's only one at any given time if you're actually in the game maybe i'm uh, thinking of a different game um and then you have you have two wands you have uh, one wand is a shield okay and the other one is an attractor and what it is attracting oh, it's that game. and you can see like lines like dotted lines going out to them are eyeballs mm-hmm. right and when you hit the button uh, if you're holding down the button, the eyeball goes towards the attractor, and you can block it with the shield. But the idea is you use this knowledge of like where the eyeball is going to go, because you know, and if you let go, it'll stop going towards it and like continue on its momentum. Right. Uh, you use that knowledge to hit the moons with the eyeball that are outside your right. chaperone, right? Right. You you olay it into the moon. Yeah. I think I was thinking of Halp. There's a game H A L P. Oh. It was I don't a know. VR game. Whatever. Anyway. Um, that game is incredibly hard to like explain. Yeah. To somebody, I had a person uh, who was like in VR, and they were like, "I want to see some VR shit." And I was like, "Blarp's pretty simple." And when I remember when your girlfriend played Blarp the she, first time, she right was, there. She, she was well, in. No, because the thing I wanted to note about that was not that she was immediately like all in. The the thing uh, was that she 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 normally gets like nauseous in VR to yeah. a limited extent, but there was no movement to it, and she immediately played it for like an hour and a half. Yeah. I couldn't get her out of the damn yeah. thing. Right? Um, and so that wait, was... Wait, wait, one more. Wait, yeah. wait, one more. Wait, wait, one more. Yeah. Wait, one, one more. She currently holds the best score in that game, which is irritating to me. Because um, <laughs> she hasn't played it since. Well, that's not why it's irritating to me. I'm but, just a competitive butthole. But yeah. uh, that, like... So anyway, yeah, that was an experience that I had uh, with VR um, that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, I watched a friend play some Gorn on the internet to today and that was pretty great um i have heard that a member of this podcast has been working on a video game that's not real and never will be starring <laughs> spider-man yeah oh yeah <laughs> I, I have an unrealized video game dream okay um, all right so it's a spider-man game you get you get that sweet uh, mcu money okay um yeah buddy so um yo disney this is a game where you don't play as peter parker okay and i'm listening um you play as a photographer for the daily planet um Google? Or, yeah, yeah, the, the Bugle. Okay. Whatever. Fuck Superman. The superhero newspaper. Fuck Superman. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to take photos for Superman. So, the game is called Spider-Man, oh. colon, get me pictures of Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're the photographer who actually does it, not Peter Parker. Well, no, so, like, hold on. So, first of all, like, the game is, like, the core gameplay is Pokemon Snap, but instead of Pokemon, you're taking pictures of, like, Vulture and the Scorpion and shit like that, <laughs> and then, like, occasionally, um, Spider-Man shows up. You, like... So, like, you finish your missions, you go to J- Jonah's desk, you throw the photos on the desk, and he looks at him and he's like, oh, these are good. Parker, your stuff's crap. You know, except <laughs> I'm that... I'm gonna go jack off. Except <laughs> that, like, somehow, every time you're assigned to take pictures of Spider-Man, Parker gets, like, way better way pictures. Way better pictures of Spider-Man? <laughs> yeah. He gets, like, way better pictures than, than you. And so you, you go, so like... So Peter Parker's the villain? <laughs> Well, so it, it builds to that. Okay. It builds to that. Because, cause like, like how does he do it? And it's like, of course, we all fucking know how Peter Parker gets great pictures of Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> Peter Parker's a fucking asshole. Peter Parker's a goddamn cam whore. Um, <laughs> but, but so, so like, the... But it's like Pokemon Snap, but, like, Pokemon Snap, you're, No like, offense to cam whores. In Pokemon Snap, you're, like, on a fixed track, usually, and you just see things that jump out. In this, it's, like, more about the traversal of the city, 
So like, oh, you, like okay. you hop in a cab. Okay. You, you hop in a cab's going up elevators and office buildings. So there's like various methods you have to like push and pull with your ability to take photos. Yeah, yeah. because the people you're taking pictures of inevitably can run and jump and fly and yeah. spider swing and whatever. And so it's like you as a as an everyman trying to catch up. Um, and so my my idea for like the the crux the the end of the game, the 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 big climax is that you snap a picture of Spider Man with his mask off. <laughs> and it's it's that's like the brutal last decision is like so this guy's been fucking your shit up yeah <laughs> you know why because he's a cheating bastard yeah <laughs> but like also like spider-man yo <laughs> like spider-man saves lives yeah, yeah. if you if but he, maybe have spider-man save his life like the main character well, well, so the, but this is, this is like a walking dead decision oh okay so it's like do you give jonah this picture because like if you give jonah spider-man's secret identity you are made <laughs> like, like, jonah will buy you a fucking mansion he'll buy you a yacht easy. yeah he'll, <laughs> like, buy you, he'll buy you a gold-plated yacht with gold-plated biddies on it but, but you know that if spider-man's identity gets out like people will hound him and kill his family and shit mm -hmm. so it's like aunt may is toast yeah <laughs> yeah like mary also, jane, mary jane also is done. the other thing that game needs is at the end when you do that if yeah. you say yes, there's like a 50-50 chance Joni even buys it. <laughs> like, you photoshopped this! <laughs> like, Get out of my office, kid! <laughs> like, that's, like, that's bullshit! <laughs> um, and what's the name of the guy who played Spider-Man, or played uh, Jonah in the movies? Uh, Is it J.K. Simmons? Yeah, you just need so, him. So he has to voice it. Like yeah. that, That's like... Like when I'm pitching this to a studio, that's like that's like one of my hard rules. Like I will walk out of this meeting if you can't promise me to get J.K. Simmons to play J. John Jameson Let's, and do the mocap. So yeah. do you remember? Do you remember my idea way back in the day for the um, the Battlefield Hardline uh, level of rarity commercial variant? Mm -hmm. Do you, you don't remember this idea? Oh, the animation stuff? No, no, no. So, like, so you remember in Battlefield Hardline, there was the thing, like, every 10,000 reloads, there was, like, a mean time to happen. You'd get a funny reload yeah. on a gun. Like, you'd throw your gun off screen, and then a third hand would come in and, like, hand you it. Or you'd, like, have to crank the clip in there, like, three times, because mm -hmm. uh, it was, like, three times too long, but you can't see because it's off screen. Like, that kind of bullshit, right? Like, so that level of rarity of when you finish the game, Jonah doesn't believe you <laughs> and does the ha-ha-ha, you're serious meme. That you? <laughs> That'd be good. All right, cool. Yeah, just like I wanted to put that out there. Yeah, no, like I want, I want there to be a chance where Jonah's just like, nah, dude, we know you hate Peter. You just did this. Well, like, like in the in the age of um, in the age of YouTube, in the age of like that kind of thing, like you need to do, start doing stuff like that where it's um, games as event, mm -hmm. right? Rather and rather than games as single personal experience, like elements of. Games sure. as event, games of, like rarity of event. Maybe Jonah's right. belief meter goes down as you antagonize Peter in front of him. <laughs> right? Like in those meetings, you're like, this is fucking crazy. How'd you do the this? Thing, like, the thing is, it's it, like, I, I think even Jonah wouldn't be able to resist it because it's like his deepest desire. Yeah. Like, he gets to fire Peter. Yeah. And it's like booming business. Yeah, he hates Peter. And he, well, and, and he hates Spider Man more than Peter. Yeah. Like, like it, if you fire Peter, you fucked both of them. Yeah, and that's gangbusters <laughs> business for the, for the people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, Peter's like probably going to die or go to prison. <laughs> um, uh, well, yeah. the one time they unmasked Spider-Man, I was really excited, and then they retconned it. So sure, Com comics are stupid people. Yeah, yeah. it's a bummer because they there was so much cool shit to and, do. And like, it would also be a really a game that'd be really easy to like DLC do DLC for. Mm -hmm. It's just like, okay, so like, hey, uh, Black Panther just dropped. Killmonger's been seen in the city. Yeah. Go take pictures of Killmonger. Killmonger has a different like yeah. Killmonger just drives cars <laughs> weird <laughs> it's really great when Spider-Man Kill is just fighting bank cars robbers. but at the same time he's just a black guy when he has his shirt on yeah right? or, or like or like the like Thanos shows up and like the Avengers are all there and like turns out every photographer has pictures because they're just making a big superhero <laughs> mess so you have to find the weird picture and that's the <laughs> only one that'll get traction because yeah. like everyone has a picture of Thanos shooting a laser or whatever <laughs> everyone's there for that part but you caught Ant Man chilling on Captain America's yeah. shoulder yeah. that was really weird you got you got you got the photo like of Pokemon Stop snaps now nice <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you got Nick Fury sitting on the giant donut. <laughs> Yeah. I was just thinking of like the Dead Rising photo mechanics, like how weird does it get? Oh, right? totally. Like, like, yeah, it's that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah I hadn't even thought about uh, likening Dead it Rising. to Dead Rising. Yeah. I never played those games. So. Um, can't anyone have anything else to say before we get to the not real game awards? No, I know, let's do this I know thing. everybody 
uh, listening to the podcast right now is very excited about the Not Real Game yeah. Awards, and yeah. I want to get to them. Let's do this thing. Okay. Todd Howard. Let's do it for the fans. Mm. Uh, none. None. Yeah. Brandon Chung? Uh, ooh. Um, one? Uh, yeah, I'd give it like one Brandon one. Chung. One Brandon Chung. There's some goofy ass shit in this game. Mm-hmm. Just playing Tacoma today. Nina Freeman. Ooh, uh, probably zero Nina Freeman's. Yeah, it's not intentional attachment. Yeah, um, didn't and make from me the cry. Game, and, and it's not like, pro- <laughs> like, like because all the characters are like the fact that all the characters are proc gen is what makes me say zero Nina right. Freeman's. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah. It's not like the game decided to make you feel that way. It's yeah. you decided to feel that way about the game. Simon Vicklin. Um, this game has good music. Um, I don't think it has any Simon Vicklin attitude. It has no attitude, and it has no attitude in its music either. Its, it's music is good, and it gives it a good vibe. We're we're batting a thousand here, Jay Sawyer. Probably a zero. Okay. Just gonna just gonna throw that you out. You got anything to say about that? No, because I, I feel like I agree with that. Uh, Jeff Bezos. I think bare like just based on the like if we're gonna take this award seriously. Just based on the like whole burning empires feudal bullshit, yeah. I would say I would say one. Yeah. Also, yeah. neutromine. Yeah. One. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was that. Yeah. Well, good. Mm-hmm. Give it one, Jeff Bezos. Okay. So here's the real stickler, I think, on this one. Mm-hmm. Tarn Adams. It gets four. Four. By by my own personal rules, I can't give it five. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's not granular enough for five in my well, book. Well, so uh, my my line in the sand. Not is enough sand. The, Sand. Like unless it, it, unless it, something really crazy happens, you can't get five unless it's that person's game. <laughs> like, like in theory, only Tarn Adams should be able to achieve a five out of five Tarn Adams. Mm, okay, uh, that's that's my personal rule. I'm I'm gonna hold to. Okay, I disagree with that rule in principle, but in practice, I think I will probably follow it. Which is unfortunate. Anyway. Jake Solomon? Oh, yep. Also, I think just like through natural processes, that ha- is how it will often play out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is it's I like, think, no, uh, I think that's how I'll do no, it. it it'll I'm be on hard. the fence on two or three Jake Solomons. Sorry. Um, I'm going to give it three. I'm, I'm at a three. Okay. Yeah. Um, like, yeah. <laughs> I don't think we need to explain that. Yeah. We've explained the things we like that lead to Jake Solomon. Um, wh- where can they find us? Uh, if you want to send corrections and game codes and screeds, uh, you can send them to badplaystyle at gmail.com and dick pics. Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> We're also on Twitter at, at badplaystyle. Yeah. Uh, you, can, you can talk to uh, Keenan and I, our social media managers. Yeah. I don't want you to show me dicks on screen. <laughs> Still waiting on Sean to do that. <laughs> So, uh, just um, a quick update on the uh, chicken hat situation. The thing we discussed last time, where we are going to um, we are going to basically uh, periodically throughout the show, if we feel like it, refer to the person by their earned titles. <laughs> we can do that. Okay. Um, feel free to send us suggestions for earned titles. Basically, how this is going to work yeah. is if you have earned a chicken hat that season for whatever reason, you have earned a title. You have to recite it at the beginning of every episode. You have to change your Steam name to that name for three months. <laughs> for three months. All right. Um, and I get two to start with. Yeah, Keenan <laughs> owes us six months. Um, <laughs> or is it two for three months? I... What do you feel, how do you feel about that? I think it's two for three months. Okay. Because, yeah, that, I mean, like I, that's how I'd lean on it. And then too, is but. it up to me in the future if I get another one to stack them? I mean, if you want... Mm, no... Like, I feel like it has to be immediate. You you don't get to dilute your own titles with other stuff. Like, like let's like like Keenan. Like, you know, let's say you get a chicken hat next season, mm-hmm. or like you you win the chicken cup or whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, oh, can we please get a chicken cup from the audience? <laughs> oh, I I should just make. It. Yeah, that'd yeah. be great. That'd be sick. Um, have it be like a fucking fantasy football trophy. <laughs> um, so like like let's say next season you win the chicken cup though, and like we like. We, we decide, like, your title's Dick Butt. Like, you don't get to diminish Dick Butt by, like, bolting on some shit, even if it was your previous titles. Okay. Now, like, maybe, like, on our, on your job resume, like, you can list all the titles you earned. <laughs> but, like, if you get the chicken so, cup... So, like, I don't get to bolt them on whenever, but maybe I say them all at the beginning of the show. Like, it, all my Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're proud of that shit, then sure, okay. man. I don't know, I'm just... I'm just wondering. Yeah, if you're proud of the fact that you're a fucking asshole, like, go <laughs> for it. Big butt. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's what we're going to do from, from here on out. Um, that's that's the plan, because the video sucked. 
um, because yeah. we didn't really put enough effort into it. Yeah. And because um, monetary penalties feel unfair. Yeah, I don't really want to do monetary penalties. That didn't seem that didn't fly right with me. But anyway, um, that's what's up. Before, just as a real quick. Um, <laughs> Honestly, the Steam name thing, like, legitimately scares me. <laughs> Especially when you have two lined up. The combo aspect is... Yeah. Uh, well, because Owen knows it's three months, right? Yeah. 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 So, uh, there we go. Um, oh, where can they find we us? Did we, we did, did that. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I can so talk Matt about the next game. Um, yeah, what you know is like? the next game? So, the next game is called Final Station. I did some digging around. Um, it's been on my wish list for a while. Uh, it has two core gameplay pieces. Uh, the first one is, you're on the last train in the world. Oh, yeah, I looked at this. It's like fucking Snowpiercer. It's something. like Snowpiercer the game, but without, like... It looks like, it looks, looks like Snowpiercer plus Deadbolt, and that makes me apprehensive, because I didn't like either of those things. Yeah, I don't know about that. Like, the combat seems less oppressive. But we'll see. We'll see, because if, if it's not Deadbolt tier frustrating, I'll be happy. Yeah, so the, the first gameplay element is that when you're on the train headed to the next station, you take care of the train and the people on it. Uh, so there's, like, some management shit in there. And then when you get to the station, you have to venture into the station, deal with any infected individuals who are in the station who attack you, and the end goal of being at the station is that you find a code to the next station for your train, as well okay. as finding supplies and so people. The, the stations are passworded? Yes. Okay. So, um, from what I understand, there's five stations, mm -hmm. and there's narrative that happens in between. Okay. So it is a very, like, finite game. Okay. Um, that's, that's what I've found looking through reviews without finding spoilers. Yeah, I looked it up on how long to beat today. Okay. Um, What's the verdict? It's like four hours. Okay, okay cool. Cool, good. Yeah, uh, I've been looking at it for a while because I dig it's like pixel art style. Okay. It's, it seems cool and it's got cool music in the trailer. And yeah. Okay. So I'm excited. So at this point, if you don't want to hear me talk about um, CS GoPros and cheating, you can stop listening to the podcast. Uh, but I want to talk about that for a minute with my friends. Okay. Um, on record. Uh, so there's also another thing that kind of ties in that I'll add in. To what? There's a news thing that happened today. Okay. That kind of ties into this. Cool. So um, it I, a while ago I fell into a YouTube hole about um, CS GoPros and their like extremely high level cheats that they it's use. Those cool cameras you put um, on your head while you play CS. <laughs> Sorry, but you freeze that GoPros. Yeah. Eat, eat this. <laughs> Um, no, um, so, like, they, they use these extremely sophisticated aim locks that are very hard to, um, to detect, and then the... You were saying, like, they ship it in on their phone? And, like, yeah, yeah, they put it on their phone, that and all they, all they have to do is have their computer be charging, or have the phone be charging off the computer, and it works. Um, and there's other stuff... It's diabolical! Uh, there's other stuff, like, you can put it in your mouse... Like, yeah, because like you can load the, the, software on yeah, your mouse. The, the peripherals you bring to the tournament, people bring them all the time. Um, and this is like a super rampant problem. I, I heard there's a... Uh, this is like sort of an aside. Mm. I heard there's an airline that... Um, you know like the uh, the, the glass cockpits and planes where it actually projects stuff onto the glass or whatever? Yeah. I've heard that there's airlines that have to format their glass cockpits every six months because their pilots charge their phones. Oh, on, and they like drag shit in on the cockpits and just malware gets off their phones and Holy into shit. the cockpit software. Like so much that it's just like, Oh, it's been three months format that glass cockpit and reinstall everything. Holy shit. Which is like terrifying to think about. Well, anyway, welcome to Shadowrun without all the cool shit. Guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, fuck. So, Welcome to Tacoma without the Orbital Workers Union. I'm looking forward to the Tacoma bonus episode, by the way. Yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's a thing. And then apparently there's also a thing that's much more affordable that you can get um, on your phone or on a second monitor for PUBG that just straight up like tells you where people are in the game. Right? And people use this frequently. And then I've, you know, I've been watching some videos... Um, uh, I started. I started going down a hole on like PUBG, like streamers and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw a lot of very to me, like I'm not an expert, but it seems seems obvious to me when someone 180 spins seven times in a row, all within one second, directly onto people's heads, including their teammate, that that's not like a humanly possible thing, even with thirty thousand really or forty thousand and really good. Like, yeah, there's that's no, not that's not a thing you can do. Um, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry, I don't believe that that is a thing you can do. Especially reliably that I can see it in every video you're doing. Yeah, sure. Like, you, you might have a good 100%. day. And, and so I but... wanted to just talk about, like, with the rise of streaming and with the rise of YouTube as a source of monetary value and careers for people, mm -hmm. there's a huge incentive to be always on. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, it's no which, longer... Which it's... results in performance-enhancing software. Right, which, right? which like... is what you... Because you, know, you well, just can't just mainline Ritalin all the time. Well, also, in, like, PUBG's case... Um... The cosmetics that you get in the game that you can sell for real, well, Steam money, mm -hmm. are tied to your battle points, and you earn battle points by getting kills and getting chicken dinners. Right, right. So it's like a further incentive to cheat in the game. Yeah. Like, that. that's nothing new. Like, sure. that's old news. Right, but, but like, in, in the context it's another of what layer, we're talking about. It's, uh, it's just another yeah. layer of icing on top of But so I'm just saying there's this described. huge financial motivation for for high-level streamers and high-level YouTube personalities and high-level esports personalities it gets worse. to be always on all the time. Uh -huh. And, and like, you can't have a bad day. It used to be, you know, your YouTube celebrities and your streaming celebrities were just people who were good at the game. Right. And it was okay for them to lose. But now it's not. Well, and right. it, it's about to get worse because the Supreme Court today said that sports betting is federally legal. Okay. So esports is going to jump on that, right? Everything else. So is does jump on that, that extend to esports? I don't. I don't actually have a full. It wouldn't. So basically, sports betting is legal. Sure. And there's not specifics about esports, so like. And like, and isn't video games technically considered like an Olympic level sport activity? I don't. I don't know. In the eyes of so law. so. Okay. Like, it's very easy to assume that this would end up happening after this, right? Sure. Where, where at that point, like Overwatch League and these other things mm. that exist, could could already be rigged, right. right? With what we're talking about. Right. But then the idea that people are betting on it, assuming it is not rigged, right? Assuming that unlike pro wrestling, it is not already predetermined, mm -hmm. when in fact it actually is. Yeah, well, by way of who brought the better cheats. That's the smart money. Yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's a whole fucking can of worms, too. So, so anyway, like, the that gets even weirder in the context of that decision being made today. There, there's just, there's a whole Pandora's box here with the whole money aspect. Uh -huh. That is just, makes me very tired. And it might be the room we're in, because it's very hot in here. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm like becoming exhausted. Just for long-time sort of... listeners, we're back in the oven. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> long-time listeners from the Californium episode, <laughs> all three of you... <laughs> All three episodes. There was n nine people yeah. downloaded that episode. It is our least downloaded episode, and it is the one that we have suffered for the, the most. most. <laughs> Jesus. Because we recorded it three fucking times. In, on a hundred degree day in my bedroom with mm -hmm. all the doors and windows closed. Mm -hmm. oh, all right, yeah, I just wanted to touch on that briefly. Um, yeah. And it's, it's, terrible, it's just like a... Terrible thing. It's a thing. And thanks for listening, folks. Yeah. I love you. We do. Welcome to Walmart. <laughs> Welcome to Costco. Yeah, I ahead. love you. Go by my good friend Benjamin Busey. You can find his SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash basicbenji206.